Good day to everyone and welcome to WOW with Dr. V on Wednesdays as we give you our appreciation for what you are doing as well as any announcements and uh, prayer requests. And then today a pre-Pentecost word that will be a carryover from what we talked about on Sunday, but just to remind us how to do it. All right, uh, we will... our announcements start with with what worship happens on Sunday. Worship starts with church school. Please join us at 930. All children are encouraged to attend classes designed for them. We are excited to hear from them this Sunday. And so while I'm saying this, let me thank Sister Yomi and Sister Rose and those who are preparing every week for our children. We are missing Sister Webb, but we're praying God's uh, blessings on her as she recovers. But we want to thank them for giving our children just a reason to be excited about coming to church on Sunday. And then we're asking them to stay on this Sunday, each third Sunday, to share with us what they've learned, but also to be in worship with us and then in their own uh, children's church on Wednesday, I mean, on, on, on third Sunday at uh, the time for the message so that they will receive one themselves. Excuse that. Um, we just want to make sure that they are knowing that their faith formation matters to us. So thanks to those who are working with our children. I just want to especially say to Sister Yomi, thank you so, so much. We want to also thank each of you for your generosity. All that you do, uh, you are making a difference. We are able to do some things that we've hoped to be able to do in a timely fashion. And we thank each of you who were at church conference on Monday night. And we thank you for your questions, your comments. We thank you for the clarity that that brought about. For we don't want you to think that you will ever have to not ask a question. Questions give clarity. And when we can give clarity, then that makes our relationship stronger and smoother. And then we can continue to do God's will with enthusiasm and no questions. And that makes all the difference in the world. So we hope to see you on Sunday, beginning with church school. Uh, and please bring the children. God bless you. Spring Festival is Saturday from 10 to 2. Uh, we are excited about our outreach into the community. We know there's a lot going on. We've got funerals of loved ones, of members, and we will do all that we can to be in as many places as possible. But we want to make sure that you get the message out to your friends, your family, to those whom you know, the children that you know, for there will be special activities just for them. There will be food and crafts. We even have children who are doing crafts and we want you to support them as they uh, begin their entrepreneurial uh, life of, of knowing that it matters that their goods and services and their gifts can be acknowledged and marketed. So we want to thank God for, for that. And thank God for Reverend Brinson and Dr. Jackson as they have prepared. Uh, we hope that you will plan to be there and invite all that you can. Prayer and Bible study tonight. The, the study series is Forgiveness, the Cleanser of the Soul. The ebook has been sent via email. If you did not receive it, please contact the office. Tonight's subject is Let There Be Light. All members are encouraged to join us for prayer at 6.30. Prayer at 6.30. We've been a little lax on that. Please try to get here for prayer. When you look at our sick list and the bereaved list, you will know why we need to pray together. So please come and pray. And then at 7, we will study together. When we do that, we as a whole experience strength, healing, and great power to do God's will. No prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. So let's come together and do exactly that. God bless you. Let us lift all those who are grieving and mourning the loss of loved ones, including Sister Emma Johnson, uh, whose granddaughter uh, 
has transitioned, Reverend Johnny Brinson, whose aunt transitioned, and then Rev and and then Sister Yvonne Barron, uh, whose son transitioned. All of the services are Saturday. Uh, please see your announcement we sent out earlier this week for the places and the times of those funerals. Uh, we will uh, share uh, where we can, and we will send those to share for us in those other places. And Reverend Brinson will be with her family. So we just want to lift everyone up. Keep everyone in your prayers. Call them by name. When you call people by name, that's praying for them, not just in general. So call each of these persons by name. For those of us who know what it means to go through this kind of grief, knows that we need the prayers of the righteous. God bless you. Then we want to pray for the healing and body and soul and mind, uh, especially for Sister Marie Webb, uh, Brother Webb, who is with her and by her side, to Brother and Sister Rose. We want to pray for Sister Cassetta Williams, uh, especially for uh, her and the G's. We want to continue to pray for Sister Joyce Crowder and those in treatment, Sister Joanna Roberts, uh, Sister Rhonda London, Brother Paul Johnson and his family. Please continue to pray for my aunt, uh, Dorothy Chimney, the Palmer's grandson, Sister Deborah Sanders, Sister Alexis Howard, Sister Patsy Rose, Do Sister Doris Brown, Sister Elsie Manning, Reverend Elsie Manning and her mother, Sister Barbara Holston, Sister Kathy Harris, Brother Artis Barrett, Brother Brandon Young, Brother Eugene Clark, Zimri Pettiford, Dr. Ballinger as she assist with the G's. Brother uh, Mark Brown, Sister Newton, Sister Jackson, Dr. Sims, Sister Johnson, we're keeping her in prayer in multiple ways. Sister Simon, Sister Glenn, Sister Hobbs, so happy to see her and the family on Sunday. Sister Barron, amen, and all who are ill and convalescing and recovering. There is a balm in Gilead to heal not only the body, but the soul. And so as they go through, please pray for them. Our pre-printed cost word comes from Romans 8, and it's Romans 8, 25. But if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. On Sunday, I talked with you about uh, holding on to your hope. And this just kind of carries over from holding on to your hope and hanging in there and hanging on. But, but we got to do it a particular way. We can't just do it um, waiting, but waiting with a, an attitude of impatience. We must wait with patience. When we wait with patience, uh, when, we, when we're patient with the process, then our hope is a living hope. Not just a hope that is dormant. I have hope, but I, I'm really not making it right now. I'm really struggling with that. No, hope that is living is waiting patiently with that hope that is vibrant and enthusiastic that you're looking for with expectation, what you expect God to do. The promises of God are true. They are yea and amen. And when we are waiting for them with patience, we're waiting with hope expectancy, not looking for it to not happen, but expecting exactly what God said to come to pass. So wait, yes. Hope, yes. But do it patiently. Patiently and enthusiastically and with the kind of hope that is expected on God to be and do everything God promised to be and everything God promises to do. So we are patient with the process because we know in the end we already win. And we know in the end that we are not walking the journey alone. That God has us in the palm of God's hands and is, and is taking care of us and making sure that we can have peace even while we wait. So have patience with the process. Get ready for Pentecost. Get ready for a new relationship with Holy Spirit, knowing that when we know who Holy Spirit is, then we can lean, depend, 
trust and not be so concerned that Holy Spirit may come to us in a way we can't control because we know the promises of God mean that God is already with us. So wherever the Holy Spirit takes us, we're in God's hands. So be patient with the process. Keep your hope living, keeping your hope alive, expectant, waiting with hope. God bless you. I'll see you soon.